So I'm not an environment artist. That's not my skill set, but I have to do it pretty consistently because whenever I make a project, I need to have some kind of a scene to house whatever is happening in the story, the characters and whatever else. And so I usually use Unreal Engine to build these scenes because there's so many different tools to sort of help you get from A to B without having the skills of a professional modeler or sculptor. And so depending on what I'm making, my workflow in this case is going to be sort of inspiration and concept art, block out with basic shapes, and then adding detail as we go. This video is going to be my process of how I tackled this particular scene. And if you're anything like me, hopefully this will give you some ideas of how you might work, or if you're curious how you could build scenes in Unreal Engine, this is just one way to do it. And one last thing before we jump in, if you're interested in animation and cinematics, creating full stories inside of Unreal, I'll have a link down below to my Summer of Unreal workshops. They are two-week crash courses meant to be bite-sized and affordable for people to jump into Unreal and just get started telling stories, making projects. But that's linked down below. But with that, let's jump into the environment inspiration. So I just started Googling like ruins and temple because I was like, that's very different from sci-fi. So I got go kind of like Indiana Jones, jungle, organic, because I always have these like hard surface modeling type things. And I thought, let's go super organic rocks and plants. And in this one, I liked the broken stones on the floor. But then this one I really liked. I liked this sort of Temple of Doom entrance into the wall. This one I liked the arches and I liked how the like rubble along the edges. I like these sort of broken pieces along the walls. This one, I think I just like sort of the, like the pathways of stone through the grass, how overgrown it all is. This filled the need of some amount of sci-fi magic. Portal ring and this like obelisk I thought was really interesting, which was just kind of more of the same. And I saw this sort of circular pattern of, of things. And I was like, that looks kind of like Stonehenge right there. And then that made me think of Stonehenge. And so I looked up Stonehenge. And so then I, using all this is sort of inspiration, I pretty much just plucked my favorite bits. And you can see that I just use super basic shapes. Um, here I have like a little archway. I tried to block out like a, a path with some like walkway railing type things, like little low walls. And I didn't fill in all the spaces because I was like, oh, if it's ruins, maybe some of it's kind of gone away. It's, you know, the rocks aren't there anymore. I'm not sure. I put this little obelisk thingy here and then I got that little portal ring. I, I literally took this part exactly as what as it was with like this broken column right here. I was like, I kind of like that, the world building of that. So I took a little broken column. You can see that the obelisk with these little edges, I just took that. I just walled it off because I thought, okay, if this is like a secret path, maybe what happens is, you know, someone is, you know, they're walking through dense forest and they stumble across a path and that path ends up leading to some kind of an archway and they enter the arch and they're like, oh, whoa, there's like a whole temple in here. And so that was the, the rough plan. These are all a bunch of planes that I just kept duplicating when I needed more room. And so what I did, there's a thing called Quixel Bridge. You can download and there's just tons of stuff. And so if you search up like collections, you can just sort of look for like, all right, I want environment, a natural, maybe I want some trees and you can find all these different things. And so I, I sort of decided what zone I wanted. I actually didn't even notice this. This is really cool. Limestone quarry. This would have been a really good idea. I didn't use this one, but this would have been a good one. But what's cool about this is it, it gives you rocks. It gives you these like floor sections. That's kind of like rubbly debris rocks that you can just kind of place around and you can rotate them and scale them up and down and duplicate them. And so you can sort of build out the ground with all this texture. You can see I grabbed a bunch of different vegetation and foliage. So I just downloaded a bunch of stuff and I figured, all right, Let's just replace all of this with better assets. And then I'll, I'll also put some big rocks like around the outside so that it doesn't feel like we're in a void. I want it to obviously feel like there's a world outside here. You can see that it's a lot more flushed out, but it's got the same general idea. And so these are just these collections of, uh, they're kind of flat, but I can absolutely scale them up tall. And now there's all this detail. And so it's up to you how you want to use them because they're photo scanned. And so they actually have like all this like plant data. I did that so that I wouldn't have to do so much work with foliage on the ground. I could just have this feel like there's stuff, people are walking and then they hit this rock and it's like, oh wait, there's like a path hidden under this mud. And these are different like stones. Anyways, you come up here and then there's this archway. You come in here and I have like little details. Like I put this, this thing's like been buried and a tree like fell on it at some point with leaves. Cause I wanted the idea that like this thing got knocked over. So there's like little moments where I tried to put pockets of storytelling. I have these three different pillars that I just shoved into the floor. Cause I was like, oh, maybe there was a pillar standing here that fell over and it was in pieces and it broke apart. And there's all these columns holding up like these shelves that are just duplicated. And I just kind of lined them up so they 
more or less work at a distance. And then I put stone walls and I built them up together. And I also put little broken pieces of the stone wall. I have like these rock things and I just shoved them into the floor so that only small pieces pop out. And it's almost like these, these walls got broken. Because if I don't have them, we just have these holes. Like, well, what happened to those rocks? Like, oh, well, they're there. They just got buried. And I took these rocks and I tried to make a walkway. And then I took a whole bunch of them and I tried to make this like tiling. This is one asset, which I duplicated through over here, rotated it so you can't tell it's the exact same thing. I duplicated it again, shoved it up, rotated it at another angle. So there's just a couple of them. This archway is actually just the same archway spun a couple of times and pushed through itself. And so what we call this, we call this process kit bashing, where you're basically just taking models from a bunch of different places and you're bashing them together as if they're from different kits of assets. It's like Legos. Like if you had, you know, the Roman set of Legos and the rock set of Legos, and those are all different Lego kits. And then you bash them together. That's where the word kind of came from. There's like rock all along the edges, which are really the same, same types of things. They're just scaled up really large. And I just created this little valley of them. So when you're in here, you can't really see out. And then this way I decided I'll put some kind of like foresty vegetation here so that we can't see this hard edge, but I don't mind being able to see like off into the distance. But this wasn't enough. This is still just like the environment. And I thought, okay, well now what we need is we need plants. So I did another version where I introduced all the foliage. But before we add our foliage, let's talk about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. As you probably know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes across hundreds of categories from animation, digital art, illustration, photography, graphic design, video production, and so many more. For example, there are the classes that I created for Blender and Maya Animation, which is a great place to get started if you want to try animation in either of those tools. But if you want to jump in on an environment that's a little bit more stylized than the realistic example of this video, you can check out classes like the Complete Beginner's Guide to Blender 3D, which has project files to download and assignments to complete. And the first 500 people to use my link in the description or this QR code will receive 20% off their first year of Skillshare, as well as the seven day free trial to jump in and start learning. If you end up not enjoying it, there's a 30 day money back guarantee, but chances are you'll learn something new and have a good time. So get started today and thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now back to our environment creation in Unreal Engine. And this is what makes it feel much more alive and interesting, especially because if you look closely, they have wind, they move. That way, when you look at it, it just feels really dense and high detailed. Oh, I also put a, a water texture down there, which you can't really tell, but technically there is water. There's some shading stuff. So I just shoved a whole bunch of stuff here, but I left enough so that the pathway still felt like there would be a pathway to walk through. And so it feels a lot more dense and rich with life as we go through here. I painted on some like vine plants that sort of hang off the edges of stuff. Just to give it overgrowth, some low level plants that kind of pop out of these pockets. A little bit of growth on the actual thing as if the vines are kind of reclaiming it. And I left it super dense and heavy vegetation everywhere except the paths. At first I had a bunch of stuff growing here, but it felt weird. And so I left them kind of on this edge of the platform and like kind of off to the side. I think at one point I had stuff on these statues, but I guess I took it off. I've got plenty of overgrowth coming out of this thing. Even up here, I have broken statues. Oh, and then if you look off this way, that hard edge is gone. Now it feels like there might just be like a, like a steep cliff or drop off. If we come up here and look down, there, there is like a water line. So if we do happen to see over the edge, it's fine, but I never intended for that to be visible. So that is the environment I built. And what's cool about that level sequence. So I basically built a master sequence. What's cool is like the camera itself is not tied to the world. So I could have the camera animated and we can kind of walk through this thing and then we'll look at the archway and we'll look at the portal and then I have all this other stuff happen. What's cool is I can swap levels and I can see that same animation at any stage. And so um, changes can be made to the level just as camera animation can be adjusted and they're separate. They don't live in the same like file. So let me go ahead and just jump ahead to the final level with all the foliage. And then I have a character in this final version with some animation that I threw in there. And so it gives us a little story of a character who walks through here and they're looking around and they enter this area. They're just kind of looking around and the character comes up and they check this thing out. And then that happens and so on, so on, so on. And if I jump out of the camera, all this is just live in here. And what's cool is if I scrub through this as my master sequence, 
these assets don't always exist. So like this portal wasn't here before. I go back to shot one, it's not there. During shot one, this is what the world looks like. During shot two, I actually changed the lighting for that other shot. So if I go through each of these, you can see that the, the overrides I make actually have some like sun animation in the first one, just to add some life. And the second one has a totally different look. Everything's in the shadow. This third one, another. So each of these kind of has their own lighting direction just because I wanted it to look a certain way. This one, this kicks on. This one, it starts spinning and has that thing happen. And then in this last one, I can see this one has like a purple light on the floor that I don't think existed here. So even though this thing is here, it doesn't actually cast any lights in the scene. But since we can't see the floor, it doesn't matter. This one, this shot, it's from this angle. And so I added a point light that's animated to flicker. And so these different assets can pop in at different times because if I go into any one shot, I can enter into its subsequences and I can see that the animation is here and I can mute the animation and the character goes into a T-pose because the character is no longer being driven by the animation. Here again is the character. So now they're, they're standing there doing their idol. I can solo it and focus only on the character standing there to see the animation. And then I've got the effects in its own layer, which is obviously that thing. And then the lighting overrides are the changes to the light position. One person could make modeling changes, one person could make lighting changes, one person could be doing animation, or multiple people could be responsible for different shots. Like we could all take a different shot and work on stuff. Those are all different files. Like this is one big project, but each piece is a different file. Pretty easily, I can just pop the character in here. And you can see that I can use this this unfinished world, yeah, and it'll all just feed back into that system. Everything in this video took about 20 hours to do. This is the first time I've ever tackled an environment in this workflow in this way. So it was kind of a learning experience and that's what I got out of it. Am I, oh, put it down, okay. But if all that stuff at the end with the subsequences and the cinematic workflow, if that's something you're interested in, animation and that stuff are both classes that I'm doing in my summer of Unreal. So if you're curious about that, link the notes below. Huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video once again. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'm Sir Wade and I'll see you in the next video. Luna says thank you too. Hi. Hi. Yeah. So much to say. All right, see you in the next video.